Your 30-year-old interior probably looks like trash. Or maybe you just don't like the color of it anymore. Well, what are your options? Well, you could, one, buy a parts car and swap everything over, which can be pretty tough to do. You could, two, buy everything from an online parts seller, which could get really expensive. Or three, you can dye your interior, which is what I decided to do. And I'm gonna go over my process of how I did that, what worked, what didn't work, and maybe you can make a decision for yourself if that's something you wanna try out. So I did it with the 1987 Mazda RX-7 Turbo 2, and I swapped everything over from burgundy to black. Now, this doesn't mean you need to swap everything over from one color to another. You could definitely take a car with like an old faded color, take those parts out, and then just give it a nice refresh and it's gonna look way better than it did before. But like I said, in this video, I'm gonna be covering every part of the car that I dyed and what parts I decided not to dye, what parts were worth it, and what parts weren't. So with that being said, let's get started. Plastics. After spending some time researching, I learned the best product to go with for the plastic was gonna be Sim. If it's good enough for the professionals, then it's good enough for a ding dong like me. I went ahead and bought the whole product lineup. It wasn't exactly cheap, but I knew this was gonna be worth it. It's a four step process of clean with the soap, spray the prep, spray the plastic adhesive promoter, and then paint it. It's a very simple process that I don't think I need to cover in this video, but always remember that a very thorough prep will lead to a much better result. But here's the thing, not all plastics are the same, which means some of the plastics from the car accept the paint better than others. The harder plastics took the paint really well, Items like the lower dash fin or this random corner dash cover. I could really scratch away with my fingernail, but the paint remained. As the plastics got softer or flimsier, like the kick panels, the paint wouldn't stick as well. Sometimes the scratches I made were pretty small, visible in person, but on camera it was sometimes hard to see. Also, plastic with a very smooth texture did not hold the paint well at all. You could easily scratch the paint off. You could give those parts a light scuff and help adhesion, but that's up to you. Lastly, we have the medium density interior parts. Parts like the A and B pillars, the door steps, the little rear plastic trunk trim pieces. This is the most common of the plastics in the FCRX7. They hold the paint well, but with enough force, the paint will get scratched off. Not as easily as the flimsy plastics, but not as durable as the harder plastics. It's like a dead center turnout, but again, Every car is going to have different types of plastics, so your results are going to vary. Carpet. Let's move on to the next biggest piece of the interior, the carpet. There's a lot to cover here, so I'm just going to ramble through everything. So different people have had very different results. Different trims have different carpets. The carpets are made up of a variety of plastics, and how well your chosen dye adheres to your carpet will vary. You can either soak the carpet in dye or spray the carpet with the sim paint. Either route you choose to go, I've read that the dyes are going to fade a lot quicker than factory over time due to sun exposure and wear. I went ahead and used both the dye and the sim paint to see which worked best on which types of carpet from my model. I first attempted to spray the rear carpet of the RXM with the sim paint. It came out okay. I will admit that I should have used a sponge to attempt to soak in the paint better, but for whatever reason, I forgot to try it. But either way, I had to use a lot of paint to get a full black color, and these paints aren't cheap. Also, I wasn't able to get in every nook and cranny on parts, and then there were areas where the paint just wouldn't stick. It turned out spotty, and on the areas where I had to keep spraying turned out crunchy. So not really ideal. And then came time to test spray dyeing the main cabin carpet. Now, I have a Turbo 2 model, and that means I have a thick, shaggy carpet, which isn't common for most cars in general, so you may not have this problem if your carpet is thinner. I test sprayed on a smaller piece, and I had a very hard time getting the spray to get to the bottom fibers. This here would have been a great time to use a sponge. I'm sure the turnout would have been much better, but after realizing how many cans of spray it was going to take me to do the full cabin carpet, I decided it was time to use the RIT dye since I figured it'd cost me less than buying a few more packs of Sim paint to finish the rest. But looking back now, I don't think it would have made a difference. But if you don't have the thick shaggy carpet, you should have much better luck spraying your carpet, especially with the use of a sponge to soak the paint in where needed. But now on to using the RIT dye. And just a heads up, 
this could end up being a huge pain in the ass. For this, you're gonna need about six to eight bottles of Rit dye, a huge bucket in an area where you don't mind spilling dye all over, a way to bring lots of very hot water to said bucket, and a few days to a week for it to soak. The longer it soaks, the better the turnout. I suggest removing the sound deadening from the carpet. It saves space in the tub, and apparently the sound deadening from the OEM carpet is the best you can get for this car. So you wanna keep it as nice as you can. And you always want to clean the carpet the best you can. The cleaner the carpet, the easier the dye can get in there. Now, I had to drive about an hour to my buddy's house where I could do this in his backyard, so I wasn't able to give it as much attention as I would have liked over the week that I let it soak. But basically, you want to fill the tub up with as much boiling water as possible, which can be tough because we're using a really big tub. Just do your best. I had a hose connected to a faucet that had some pretty hot water, while also boiling as much water as we could with what we had. Next, throw in the dye in the carpet. Maybe an old dirty hat while you're at it. Anything you want to attempt to dye, throw it in there. Cover your bucket to prevent anything else getting in there. I suggest stirring or flipping the carpet on a daily basis. That way every corner is getting soaked. You don't want any air bubbles, which I think may have happened to me. I stop by the house every few days to check the progress. Definitely the longer I left it in there, the darker it got. I think I ended up leaving mine in there for eight days. The goal was to get it pitch black. I had spots where the dye didn't grab. That's where I'll go in later and use some of the sim paint to spot touch it. Like I read on the internet, the rear carpet does not accept the RIT dye, like at all. Except for the edges, which is threaded and not carpet. Spraying it for what it seems is your best option for what will probably be an okay to best turnout. As you see from these clips, there are some tough to reach places on the rear carpet. Next up, we got the high wear areas places where your arms, your feet, your body are going to be rubbing a lot. On these items, it was suggested to not dye them. The dye can rub off on your skin or your clothes, which would really suck, and you'll have an obvious wear spot from the dye rubbing off. So for me, I decided I would not dye my seat covers, my seat belts, my center armrest, and my door cards. Those you'll want to buy or have them reupholstered. For my seats, I ordered brand new seat covers from lc.com. And while I haven't yet gotten to install them in my car, I absolutely love their turnout on them. You can see on the recliner lever, I didn't bother dyeing it. For one, I don't think that plastic piece can be removed without breaking it. It's a mostly smooth piece, so I don't think the dye would even adhere to it very well. And since I'm touching it all the time, I don't think it'd be worth dyeing. Luckily, it doesn't really bother me, and maybe I'll find another piece in my interior to add or to keep some burgundy for it all to tie together. Cloth. You can spray either option since the cloth absorbs the paint so well. There's only two pieces in the car this covers, and that's the headliner and the sun visors. Only problem is on the sun visors, there's a small piece of smooth plastic that I don't think can be removed without it breaking. So I bought some cheap faded ones, and I re-dyed them with the RIT. Vinyl. This is what your dash is covered with. It's not leather, it's vinyl. We also have vinyl on the front and rear of the headliner trim and parts of the door cards. So the vinyl absorbed the sim paint better than anything else in the car. Now my car's stuck in a corner paint shop with the dash still in it, so I haven't been able to dye mine myself yet, which is the whole reason this video has been delayed. Maybe I'll make a video on dyeing just the dash when I get my car back. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it. But from the turnout on the headliner pieces and seeing someone else's sim dyed FC dash in person, I can confidently say it turned out great. Like hands down, dyeing your dash is so worth it. How long will it last from sun exposure? Will it rub off over time? I can't really say, but it does look great. Just make sure not to use the plastic adhesive because it's not plastic. If you do, I was told it'll turn out bad and you'll have to wipe it off somehow and redo it. Rubber and miscellaneous pieces. The weather stripping around the door of the FC will be half black and half of whatever interior color you have. Mine didn't take the dye too well from sitting in the tub, so I decided to try it again on the stove with very hot, not boiling water. I also had a few other random pieces that I threw in there to see how they turned out. I left it in the pot for about five days, reheating the water two or three times daily. As you can see, like the other pieces, the type of plastics determined how well they dyed. The hanger clips kind of took the dye on part of it. Some of the clips did, depending on the type of plastic. This medium plastic piece that's broken, it didn't take it at all. And the weather strips perhaps took the dye a little bit, 
but if anything, I think I damaged it. I'm comparing the one I tried to die with the one I didn't die at all on the right. It did not work out like I had hoped it would. So, was it worth it? That really depends on you, how much you use your car, what type of use you're getting out of it, who's getting in, who's getting out, you know, how often you're using it and whatnot. But for me, yeah, I, I'm stoked. You know, after driving my car for a few months, I was getting real sick of like this really faded, old, ugly, burgundy interior. Now don't get me wrong, if it's like fresh and crispy, I think it looks good. But I just really wanted a black interior. And if I was gonna do something about my interior, I decided I might as well get what I want out of it. And I really wanted like a pitch black interior. So that's what I did. And I'm super excited to put everything back in the car and just see how everything looks. And I'll definitely make a video covering that. And I wish I could have it right now to show you guys, but I just don't have my car back yet. But there are parts of the car that I kind of discussed during the video uh, that are worth it and that aren't worth it to die. I got a little list so I don't forget anything. The things that I think that were totally worth it, the dash, for sure, 100% worth dying. If you just want to refresh yours or do a different color, totally worth it. I don't think it's something you have to go, you know, pay a bunch of money to like get it in a black dash. I know those are expensive for this car. I think dying your dash, you're going to be stoked. Two, a lot of these plastics on this car in general that aren't getting, you know, a lot of high wear or just some of these plastics really took the paint really well. Like this item right here and similar plastics of this quality just took the paint super well. Like right here in this little dash cover and there's other random pieces on the car too. Parts that weren't worth it, I'd say high wear items like this right here. This item, not only is it a high wear item, but also the type of plastic that it is, it's just kind of that flexible type of plastic. You could you, you could scuff this. You'll see the old color below it, and that could bum you out. Again, it just depends on your preference, but for me, I'd probably get a little bummed over time. But some pieces are easy to take off. You just respray them, no big deal. Uh, another item that I don't think was worth it was the carpet. To have such a spotty result on not just the front part of the carpet, but also the rear carpet, and for as much time as I had to invest and the money I had to invest, I think it would have been better for me just to go on Rock Auto, buy a brand new carpet. I think it was like three to 400 bucks. You could get it even cheaper if it didn't have like any kind of sound deadening or heat protection on it. But with that stuff, I think it was around three, 400 bucks. I think I'd be happier with that result at the end of the day and I could have just sold my old carpets. That's what would have worked for me and that's, you know, it is what it is. Things that I think you should buy new, door cards, seat covers, seat belts, center armrest console, and like I already said, the carpet. These are just things that, you know, when you're sitting in the car or getting in and out of, there's a lot of friction with your body and maybe you're sweaty or you're, you know, just got done, just got out of the rain or you just put some sanitizer on your hands, you know. These are things that could put that paint at risk of coming off. That dye could rub off on your clothes or someone else's clothes. You don't want to ruin, like let's say you're on a first date with your fresh interior. You don't want, you know, to ruin their clothes. They're going to be bummed on you and your silly car. That's going to suck. So those items have just getting new or in a good condition of your preferred color. So that about covers everything. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope I could help you out in your decision making. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll love you forever, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.